Okay, yeah, I've gone live, so okay. everybody can. All right. Have a nice class, guys. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Kiri Isaac Amal. I'll be taking you through this second session of film development uh, for the remaining hour or so, hour and 30 minutes, just to sensitize and also uphold what we learned in the morning in terms of filmmaking. Now, film development, as you've now understood how I take on my class, I like simplifying things and making things easy to understand. As I had said earlier, I'm just going to give you what we call a CSL, a crash summary lesson on film development. Uh, if you are with us in the morning, uh, some of the things that I will say will sound familiar and therefore you'll just be weaving them together for the purpose of this class. So uh, film development, in this case, as usual, the most important thing is to give you a picture of what you'll expect in this lesson. The first thing you should expect is to have an understanding of what film development is. And understanding therefore means thereby means you being able you being able to explain, define, and tell what film development is all about in very few words. So that is the first objective of this lesson. The second objective is to open up your mind to film development industry or what we call the film development scope. In other words, what are the things surrounding film development? What is the environment of film development? What is the environment in film development? So that is what we are calling film development scope. So we have film de development uh, definition, then we have film development scope. And then the third thing, is just generally uh, giving you the understanding of the aspects that will continue or the aspects that maintain film development. Because we want to, I want you to, I want to help you understand that this is not a one-time thing. Just because you've gotten information about film development, it does not mean it ends there. There is a whole space of innovation because you should understand that for a long time we've had film with us for over a hundred years and you should be able to know that for those a hundred years there has been a group of people who has who have been working hard to make sure that film does not die with them so they pass on the baton to the generations that come in and they're able to invest a lot of money and a lot of time in innovation so that the development of film does not end in a particular gen with a particular generation but is passed on from one generation to the other a very good example is like right now a lot of you can be able to stream content online you can stream content via netflix and stream content via showmax via prime videos etc that was a development that was non-existent 30 years ago and even 100 years ago if you talk to a person who was starting out film at that time they will be they will be seeing that aspect as some sort of witchcraft you know an impossibility how can i be able to do that because that was not in their scope so right now we we'll need to understand after having all these ideas about film, how will we maintain or sustain this growth for the next generation? Yes, we have the internet, we have the computer. So what is what next for us? And that's why uh, some of the things that will be brought, I'll bring up uh, new innovations or emerging issues and trends in film as part of our film development session today. 
So we can start with the first thing. So the first thing is film development definition or explanation. Uh, for those who were in our previous class or in our early, uh, in our first session, I'll just be able to repeat some of the things that I've said. But in this case, development is the ability to build something or to make something. The ability to grow something from one uh, point to the other. For example, when you're developing uh, your career, there is a time you start. And when you're starting, it looks as though you don't have much, but that is the beginning of the development phase. And you work maybe 30 years, 40 years, and you can be able to attest that there's been a development, meaning you've moved from one stage to another. So in this case, when you talk about film develop, development, you're talking about film growth or film growing from one stage to another. In our previous session, I was able to pinpoint about uh, film stages or film phases. Those are the same things that we'll bring in in film development. We'll be able to showcase how film grows from the planning stage to the compilation and distribution stage where a particular film becomes legend and sells and it becomes one of the examples or a monument to be discussed in many years, many years uh, later. So definition we can write and say film development is, is the act, is the act of building or growing or nurturing or germinating. The best words there to use are growing, nurturing, developing. It's the act of growing, nurturing, developing, can say germinating. Film concepts or film ideas, film concepts or film ideas, film concepts or film ideas, into, into a movement, into a movement, into a movement, into a movement or 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 character that shapes character that shapes the world or the universe now that is a way that i've coined that particular definition so that you can fit in the class session that i have today because you have to understand that you're not doing this film for yourself alone you have a target audience that's what we're talking about shaping a character, all right? We're talking about a movement because your film, your, your film should be able to create an emotion that will outlast yourself. Your film should be able to create an impact that will outgrow you. So if I just give you a basic definition, like what you may have in class, you'll not be able to move beyond that because this is not an academic class this is formal this is a form of a master class whereby you have to grain the information you you're, you're given and bring it to life and therefore for me to help you to bring to bring it to life i have to uh, keep that definition in that particular style so we are saying it is the act the act of nurturing developing growing film concepts film concepts to form a movement or to shape character of the world to shape the character of the world now the world basically is a synonym for people and people can be uh, individuals from your community can be your family it can be a whole nation etc etc so it is from that definition that now will branch out into the other areas that you should be able to understand. Now, in this case, film development is encompassed 
within three processes or three stages. For those who are there in our first session, you may know these stages as we talked about. So uh, these stages are number one, the pre-production stage. The pre-production stage, it is a very crucial stage for film development. This is the foundation of film development, the pre-production, the pre-production stage. This is also known in brackets as the planning phase or the planning stage, whereby you organize and build on what you will want to see in the future. Planning. Planning is very important in every place. And when you're planning, you have an intention of bringing something to life. But because you need to have a map out of where you need to go, then the plan is important. Remember the cliche saying, if you plan to fail, you fail to plan and vice versa. So in this case, the pre-production is a planning phase. Then the second stage of film development, the second stage of film development is the production stage, which you're also calling shooting or recording stage. You can also call it uh, in another way, performance stage. This is where the performance happens. This, this is where the film comes to life. All right. Then the third part of film development is what we're calling the post production, the post production stage. We also we, we also uh, identify it as the compiling and distribution stage in film development. So in those three areas or in those three stages, our film development comes to life or our film development is activated. And I will show you how to activate that. And just for the purpose of making this particular session different, those uh, three stages that we've mentioned in film development, I'm going to give them uh, a very uh, unique term or unique terms so that you can be able to understand this particular uh, this particular session in a unique way. So within the film development stages where we have pre-production, production and post-production, I would like you to call them in this form, which will fit now the definition that I started with. So I would like you to branch them in this way. So in the film production, uh, in the film development first stage, the pre-production stage, where the planning, I want you to call it the conception, the conception, conception period or phase, conception, conception. Then the second area or the second phase, I want you to call it the germination or incubation germination or incubation phase, the germination or incubation phase. And then the third one, just call it the distribution stage or the distribution period. The distribution period. Now, remember our definition, as we had said earlier, that film development is the act of building, growing, forming, nurturing, film concepts to shape character or to create a movement to the world. So from that definition, I'll be able now to fuse it with the film development uh, stages and be able to help you understand why are we talking about conception? Why are we talking about incubation or germination? And why are we talking about distribution? in terms of development. It's necessary for you to see this particular point of view that uh, just like the creation of human beings, for those who are Christians or for those who have understood the creation theory, 
the creation theory starts with uh, God conceiving an idea that uh, let us create man in our own image and likeness. All right. So God is conceiving an idea that has been in his mind for a very long time to an extent that he speaks to the people around him or to other guys around him or to other spirits around him, telling him, telling them that we should create a person or we should create one individual after our own image and likeness. So the conception is the idea and it is in the development, the development of an idea that your film starts it is in the development of your idea or the idea that film starts. And that idea can be in your mind. But unless you verbalize it, unless you articulate it, it will die within your mind. It will just be playing within that space. So in this case, God is conceiving an idea, saying, let us make man in our own image. So for me, I will tell you like this. When you start in the, your career in film development, you should ask yourself, what will I make in my own image and likeness? What will I make in my own image and likeness? What will I make in the image of what suits me best? Because that is the idea around film development. And I'll give you an example. Look at majority of these films that we see, whether feature films, documentary films, etc. They are created in, in a person's image and likeness, meaning the producer has a concept. That concept has what they like, and what the image. For example, uh, let me talk about a movie or one of the sequels that is very famous in the world, Spider-Man. Now, in, in, rea in, in reality, we don't have a human being who can fly like that, and a human being who can, you know, just warp out webs from their from the palm of their hands. But that is an idea in a person's mind it's an image that they like seeing and associating with themselves so they decide to create and develop this concept in a way that this particular concept will be shared by uh, film producers all around the world to a target audience and a movement will be created and a character will be developed to an extent where small kids are impacted by just viewing that particular film and they 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 create an imagination of them being spider-man we have superman we have batman all these are conceptions of people sitting down and saying let us create this let us conceive this in our own image and likeness so i'll ask you a question what can you conceive and create in your own image and likeness that is the aspect of film that you should be able to look at. That is the aspect, number one, film development aspect you should be able to build. Let me create this in my own image and likeness. So what is your likeness about? Do you see yourself becoming superhuman? Then you can create that. Do you see yourself helping children, uh, you know, come out of their ill-fated life? You can create that. Do you see yourself thinking um thinking about something before others actually think about it you can create a film about that so every image that you see and everything that you want and desire in your own likeness you can create it that is what we are calling the conception development stage of film or the conception period so how do you develop this conception or how, how do you develop your how do you develop film around the art or around the phase of conception okay now apart from the planning which is very basic and all that what i will tell you is conception should be able to come out from something that you have imagined or uh something that you've been thinking about for very long we all think you can think that for example you may think that uh Whatever could be a telephone, whatever could be a mobile phone, whatever could be able to hack into someone's mind without um, actually being there, all right? That is an idea, that is a concept. Conceive it. Now, when you're conceiving it, what you do is you have to write it down. That's the first development. 
you write it down. So write your idea down. That is the first step. Write your idea down. It doesn't matter how uh, foolish it may sound. It doesn't matter how smart it may look. Write it down. Because when you write it down, you're appreciating the fact that you've thought about it and you've now given it power. All right? Because remember, with conception, you want to bring that particular idea to life. So when you write it down, remember you're writing it down in your own image and likeness. So write everything um, in terms of features and characteristics of your idea. In, in summary, point form. So for example, uh, let me choose the idea of Spider-Man, for example, because it's easy. So the person thinks uh, they've been seeing themselves or imagining themselves as a man who can fight and warp uh, webs out of his palm, etc., etc. And this person has superpowers and all that. So just write that down. So I write down my 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 idea is about a spider man or a man who has spider features. So what does this person do? He can shoot webs from the palm of the hand. This person can run very fast. This person has maybe intense power. Okay, this person has this weakness. This person is attracted to A, B, and C. So you list them in form of features. At least develop uh, three main to nine features. If you have three to nine features in your conception, then you're good to go because it is from that development summary that now you'll branch out to all these other areas because you'll be able to see your film coming to life. You'll be able to see, okay, this image I've created has the following features. So how will these features now fit in to the next phase that I'm going to create, right? So that is the conception period for you. Very easy, writing, writing. Think right, think right, and don't complicate the process. Whatever, whichever, pro, whichever way uh, your thoughts come in and the, and the ideas come in, just write them down. You'll be able to organize them later on in a, in a wonderful way or in a simple way. But the first thing is to appreciate that you've received the idea by writing it down. Write the characteristics all the way. Whichever the characteristics you have, write them down. It doesn't matter how foolish they look or how silly they sound. Make sure you write them because film development has a target. And the target is to create a movement. The target is to shape character. The target is to leave an impact. Remember how we define film development in our uh, just a few min minutes ago. That is the premise of everything that I'll be talking about. It's based on that definition, all right? So from the conception period, you have written everything, all the features are good. You realize, okay, nothing is missing. So you have this image in your own likeness. Now, the next thing is to go to the nurturing phase or the germination phase. In this case, you're saying you breathe life into that particular idea or concept that you've just created. You're breathing life. Remember, going back to my creation story, God said, let us create man in our own image and likeness. And God said, let them have power and dominion over the fish and the sea, over the battle there. Now, what God is doing is generating features of this creation. But then you may put features, you may write down, you may say this person to have these characters, etc., etc. The same way I've just given you my example of Spider-Man. I've given him these characters. Let them be like this. Let him be like this. Let him be like this. But I have not given him life. Because that's the next thing. You have to breathe life into your character. You have to breathe life into, your, into what you've conceived. And therefore, in my creation story, God takes, uh, you know, uh, clay or what we call earth or some soil, and he molds the man that he wants, the concept that he has, 
with the characteristics that he has, then he breathes into his nostrils. He breathes life into that particular uh, model of man. He breathes life. Remember now he's breathing from his own and he tra he's transferring that energy, that life into this soil, into this model. That is the same concept that you as a filmmaker will do when you're developing. After you conceive, you have to nurture. So how do you nurture? You have to breathe life into your character. Now, breathing life into your character in basic terms is what now we are calling the shooting and recording phase. The shooting and recording phase or what in other terms we are calling the production phase. So you are breathing life into the things that you had written down. So in this case, you're transferring your energy from within you, right? And you're putting it into a camera, you're putting it into actor's minds, you're putting it into a director's mind, you're putting it into a set, you're putting it into everything that surrounds film. So you're bringing that life into those, into all these elements. For example, you're breathing life into a camera. What are you doing? You're using that particular tool to tell your story of this particular man who in this case for me it's, it's spider-man you can create your own there are so many uh images and likeness and features you can develop for the conception development area for me is spider-man you can choose batman you can choose your own design now in the nurturing phase or in the germination phase the development here is to breathe life into all these elements and breathing life into all these elements requires you to take your energy, your effort and transfer them into the camera. So if it is that idea, all right, you have to transfer the energy to the camera. So how you're shooting is very important. Some areas will require you to shoot in darkness. But if that particular darkness and that particular set, all right, matching the features that you had conceived, is it giving you, is it bringing the life of the things that you had conceived? That's a question you need to ask. For example, my case with Spider-Man, Spider-Man has to uh, fly, all right, or jump from one building to the other. Now, how will I bring that feature using my camera? Will I need a, an advanced camera for that, All right? How will I bring that energy into my set? How will I make an actor jump from one building to the other? How will I nurture him or nurture her to be able to do that particular thing? Those are things that you're asking yourself. It's called breathing life into your idea, making it come to life. In this case, we are calling it the nurturing phase or the germination phase or the incubation phase remember when i was starting out i told you to divide it into that conception incubation distribution in the incubation we are talking about nurturing we are talking about germination and in this case i'm saying bringing life to that particular uh, area so for you to develop your nurturing or incubation phase first of all what you need to do is match the features that you wrote with any equipment that you will need. Number one, any equipment that you'll need. Match all, all those features. If you develop three features, if you develop nine features, all right, match them to every equipment that you will require to bring that feature to life. The other thing, match the actors with every feature that is in that particular conception period match those actors in there all right if you need a short actor because your feature was uh, this guy should have this height and this height you match an actor to that feature if there's a particular setting that you saw in your mind all right match it make sure each and every feature or characteristic that you mentioned in the conception period you are matching it in the incubation period if it's lights if you see there will be a need for light in this if there will be a need for makeup 
you have to match the makeup with that particular characteristic. If there will be a need for, uh, you know, some form of magic and all that you had seen in your mind, match it with any element that will be in the shooting period. Just match all those characteristics, match all those features. What you're doing, you're breathing life from your features, you're exchanging and you're, you're passing that energy into the camera into the stands, into the tripods, into the scenery, how the set is being designed, how the actor is moving, how the actor is talking. That is the incubation phase. That is the germination phase. That is the nurturing phase. And that is how you develop. I'm giving you very uh, unique and uh, simplified methods of developing your film without going uh, to this academic uh, academic state or aspects because academic aspects are just that they are meant for academics but now when you shift from the academics into the reality of the industry you realize that there are some weaknesses about that because they're just built for your passing the exam but these others are built for you to practice out here step by step so Incubation phase, you've breathed life into all these elements, your cameras, whichever equipment that you'll use, your actors, right? Your uh, lights, your scenery. Now, let me talk about set design in terms of film development in this incubation period and what you're also referring to as the production or shooting or recording stage. Set design is the creation of an environment or a scene that captures, right, the image of your film concept or that brings the image of a film concept into reality. Why? A set is an environment. So what kind of environment had you pictured? Which features had you pictured? Did you feature that uh, that environment would be indoors or outdoors? Were you seeing it in form of a huge house or a small house? Is it is it a house that can appear and disappear? Is it a house that camouflages in the environment? How do you want that set to look like? That's why we are saying set design. There is some aspect of designing in that particular thing because you're bringing your, your concept to life. You're nurturing that particular set to match what you had seen. Remember my creation story. Let us make man in our own image and likeness. Uh, let this man have dominion over A, B, and C. So you're giving the characteristics. Then God breathes, takes the soil, models the man. When God is modeling that man, he had already created a set where that man will land. He had designed a set known as the Garden of Eden. That is what we are calling a set design. And in this case, the set design in film, all right, is your Garden of Eden. That's where you're building everything that you want for this model uh, man, whom you're calling Spider-Man, whom you're calling Batman, whom you're calling whichever name. It doesn't matter the series, the concept is the same. So when you're developing that set, you should look at the set in form of a way that will enrich and nurture the performance of your characters and the performance of everything that you had envisioned. The set is the most important thing apart from the actor and the devices that you use to bring that in the set because you cannot shoot film in a vacuum, all right? We have a bigger earth, which is the biggest set design. Then we have our environment where we build houses, we build rooms. In a room, we have a space. So when you're designing a set, you're designing the size and the shape that will be able to encompass everything that you want to work on in terms of your film. Remember our definition, we said film development is the act of building 
nurturing, developing, growing film concepts into a movement or into something that will shape the character of the world. So in this case, you've designed your set, you've put your energy, you've transferred your energy, pardon, to the camera, to everything. You've matched everything with the characteristics that you developed in the conception period. Now, you move on to the third period, which you're calling the distribution. The distribution phase or the distribution uh, uh, area in film development. Now, you're not distributing uh, from a vacuum. You're distributing from something that is tangible, something that can be expressed, something that can be sensed with the five senses. So I have to make sure you understand this. When you're nurturing that particular film or that film concept, all right, you're nurturing it so that when you come to the distribution, you will impact your world. You will create a movement. You will shape character you will create an impact. Now, if you are not, if your film concept, and this is very important for you guys to note, if your film concept cannot create a movement, if your film concept cannot shape character, if your film concept cannot leave an impact, then my dear friend, you're missing the point, all right? Because there's nothing that you're doing that will just be zero grazing, zero grazing. That is just zero grazing. You have to make sure you create a movement, you shape character, and you create an impact. That is the purpose. Because if you if you don't have a serious agenda for your film, it will just be a waste of time and waste of energy. Why are you doing all this work? Why are you looking for all this money? If the film cannot even impact you personally, financially, why are you looking for this money? And remember, for, for every film to sell or to gross highly, what we call uh, uh, box office aspects, okay? For example, uh, one of the greatest film re released recently uh, was uh, that had one of the greatest actors that passed, Chadwick Boseman. A lot of you know that film, okay? It had some of the best slogans that are even even to this day and many years to come will be there. Chadwick Boseman as an actor will forever be remembered. Why? Because of that Wakanda phenomenon. Black Panther created a movement. Black Panther shaped some form of character. Black Panther created an impact. And if your movie shapes character, creates an impact and creates a movement, you will earn a lot from that particular film. Because people want to see it. There's the way it's affecting them. It's driving their emotions uh, left, right, and center. Therefore, they are drawn and attracted to that. And as a consequence, you earn from it. So coming to my point, why will you create a film or why will you develop a concept that will not create a movement, that will not shape character, that will not create an impact. Why are you doing that? I will advise you, don't start creating until you can be able to measure or understand whether you create a movement, character, or impact. So film concepts that now move on from the nurturing phase or the incubation phase into the distribution phase are now being tested. This is the testing phase. Okay, the pre-production is the testing phase, especially when it comes to distribution. It is a testing phase to see the everything that you're working for. That team that was working on that film, all right, have they done a wonderful job? And have they created a global impact? Now, your impact may not be global, but it can be uh you know 
a community impact, maybe just in your community. It starts from there. As long as it can create an impact within the community, nations, okay? So you should be able to see it in that particular form. So they will be tested. And one of the tests that a lot of film fail in the distribution phase, and this shows poor film development, all right, is failing the financial test. I know some people may see that as a, a what we call, you know, a very unpalatable comment or unpalatable idea. See, but you have to understand that finances or financial gain, all right, is an ethic in film development. It's an ethic because you don't want to create a film, a filmmaker who will be a thief. You don't want to create a filmmaker who will be stressful and depressed because they're not earning from their craft. Because remember, this is hard work, sweat and tears. So there is profit that's supposed to be gained. So if you develop your film properly, all right, you will reap some good financial rewards. The financial test is very important in the distribution phase and in film development. I'll give you very practical examples. For example, how comes uh, Nollywood as an industry has succeeded? Or we are seeing or uh, getting to understand its success right now. You should understand that this particular success that they are enjoying right now started over 30 years ago through simple work and development. And every now and then making sure they they use their resources and the resources of the government to fund films everywhere in Nigeria and to sell their culture, to sell their works all around the world. So it's a process in film development of conceiving or conception, incubating, incubation, nurturing, so that now the distribution can be effective. Remember when you're distributing, the reason why I'm talking about the financial test here is because your distribution will require money. If you want to send your actors all around to do marketing for you, you have to fund them. If you want to generate DVDs for your movies, okay, you have to pay for that, all right? If you have to, uh, you know, schedule your films all around the world in various cinemas, you have to have finances for that. Your actors need to be remunerated properly. You have to have finances for that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, if the film development exercise from conception to incubation has been perfect or has been uh, has faced less challenges or has been worked on properly, the distribution phase will not be a challenge because they already knew that this particular film. I would like you to look at uh, to check some some of this, some of the contents of uh, the film Black Panther. And in this case, um, check some interviews done by the director and the producer and some of the actors. You realize they had a feeling and they had an idea of what Black Panther would be to the black community, not only in the United States, but around the world, even before the film was completed. They already had the idea and therefore they knew the director and the executive producers knew there is a financial test in this place and if we commit we will reap the financial rewards and even to this day black panda is among the highest grossing films of all time in the world of hollywood why they knew will create a movement will create an impact will shape character hmm? So the distribution phase has financial tests on it. Number two, in the distribution phase, right, there's another test we call the performance test. Okay, let me put it in more simple terms. We have the actor's test. Actor's test or the professional test. The professional test is seen in the distribution. In this case, a lot of people and this is the world who will be watching this film, will either comment negatively or positively. 
He'll either comment negatively or positively about the quality of work that is done and the quality of acting. So in this case, we're talking about the entire team that worked on that particular film. How will they perform when their work is met by the world or the audiences? Will people say, wow, I like that uh, director or oh, that director did a good job. The cinematography was amazing. Oh man, how the editing work, the editing phase, it looks well arranged, it looks momentous. It's something wonderful to watch. The actors are magnificent, all right? Or would they say, mm, the editing was poor. Look, the lip syncing is bad. Oh, the lighting is very poor. The actors are plastic, etc., etc. These are the tests that you will be getting the distribution phase. When you got the distribution phase and maybe you're planning to do some marketing around the world, uh, you're going to Cannes Festival or you're going around uh, uh, these film cities around the world, will your film seatings or sessions have a crowd that wants to get to know you guys? Or will your crowds be empty? When your film is launching in various theaters or cinemas around the world, will those theaters uh, be well booked? Will they have numbers that are big for that particular film? Now, it's not that when you have a lesser number, it means your film was, was wanting. It just means that your film did not have a greater impact or it did not convince the audience more for them to sit down and watch it or for them to be so emotionally tied to wanting to know what is going on with that film. So these are the tests that you go through in the distribution phase. And therefore, for the development of film, these three stages, which I've called conception, incubation, right? and distribution are all important in the development of film. So let me give you a practical example. If the, if the, if the private partners, uh, if the private sector and the government of the day in various, country, various countries see that film is, is making a lot of money, film is bringing tourism in their country, film is enabling the environment in their nations, you know, get noticed, etc., etc. Of course, they'll be forced by that circumstance to chip in and to fund the development of film in that region. Why? They can see a benefit out of that. But that benefit has come because in the film development processes or in the film development stages, the actors and players in that have been able to be honest and trustworthy in the discipline of making sure they create great films and they develop each and every stage in a perfect way, leaving no stone unturned. So what will happen in the future? This particular government entities and private entities will be speaking about, hey, did you see Wakanda? That's a good film for us. We are seeing how African, uh, uh, the black community is being raised and all this. And when that is being projected in the media, Young people are watching. So there will be a young director in there who is influenced. By them being influenced, they will develop film further in their generation. They will want to create something even better than, than Black Panther and Wakanda. So they will move this particular aspect of film development to their next generation and so forth. Right now, there's a new technology that is coming in uh, that is in the, in the works known as Metaverse. Now, the metaverse technology will change how we consume film rapidly. When it starts, the way we are connected to film via, you know, telecasts or what we view via online videos, etc., will change because we'll be able to have the virtual reality aspects that are now ingrained into our film and series you'll be in that particular session where the actor is working out in a particular set. You're there and you're feeling the entire 
the entire process. The same way you're filling it outside when you're watching it. Now that particular time you'll be able to fill it even more. Why? Because of the metaverse technology. But the metaverse technology cannot be able to introduce that if they don't see any benefit from the distribution phase of distribution development uh, area of film. Because remember, we are living in a world that decides what to do based on money. There's nothing wrong about that. It's just that anything that you touch at some point behind the scenes, at the back seat, some money will be needed. So if your film fails the financial test, meaning it cannot create an impact, it cannot create a movement, it cannot uh, generate character or shape character, then a lot of people will not be able to fund it very well. I would like you guys to go and check out uh, um, there's a development that that failed quite recently uh, from a very renowned uh, Walt Disney director. He wanted to create a streaming platform like Netflix and Prime Video, etc. But now, in this case, he wanted to produce something that was amazing and different that people would consume, you know, when seated on the train or seated on the buses and all that. But his idea was somehow uh, difficult to work. But he got a lot of money from so many people because he had a proven track record. I think the idea is known as QB or, or something. Uh, when I get, I'll send Rich, I'll send, I'll send Rachel the the contents of that particular idea developed by that uh, ceo and proprietor of films in hollywood he was he came up with an idea that uh, sound sound that an idea that looked you know very lucrative it had some aspects of impact and all that when he was presenting it and he got a lot of money but the idea failed it felt like nobody's business and they had to return all that money to their partners but their partners had trusted that person because they saw uh they saw the impact that netflix created with film they saw the impact of tiktok they saw the impact of how youtube is bringing out films etc etc and they saw that maybe this particular idea can work, but it never worked. Why? The idea was already uh, was already down because a lot of competitors had already sunk up into that, and how it was executed was wanting in some fronts, especially when they were dealing with issues of competing with TikTok and issues of trying to capture the attention of the youth using very expensive uh, formulas. Generally, the purpose of telling this story is to enable you guys to know that the money test or the financial test is what enables film to develop rapidly. The reason why Kenya is struggling in film development is because one of the areas that we, we fail a lot is in the financial test. That is one of the areas that we fail a lot. It affects our film development. We are good at conceiving. We can conceive. We can create things in our own image and likeness. We can incubate. We can develop film into uh, this wonderful thing. But the financial aspect, when we come to the distribution stage, it will always flow. Why? Our films do not shape character. All right? Our films not generally, generally, create a movement. Our films do not generally impact. And the films that have done that, right, they have gotten this traction because they'll get some financial uh, funding because people can see there is a movement here. There is a, a campaign against something or a campaign for something, etc., etc. And the performance test, 
that's the other thing that fails the Kenyan industry. Film development in Kenya fails because when we come to the performance test, our actors sometimes are wanting, all right? Our actors sometimes are wanting. And this uh, right now is really, uh, you know, is really improving in terms of uh, the acting industry. We have a lot of young people who are coming in the acting industry who are doing a better job. And the performance act in Kenya will continue improving if we continue making sure that all players in the industry, whether camera persons, directors, work as a team, and they invest in their craft in a way that they will be able to attract the attention of other African countries and the world, the same way Nigeria did, the same way South Africa has done, the same way India has done, et cetera, et cetera. So, with that particular uh, phase ending, the distribution phase in film development, we come to the third part, remember, of the thing that we're talking about in terms of uh, film aspects, where we talked about uh, film definition, film, de film development definition. Then we came to film development uh, application which was the second where we talked about all those three stages. Now we are talking about film, devel film development uh, enhancement or projection towards the next generation and all that. Now in this case, with the distribution phase, what you just need to ask yourself is, if today you pass away or you don't have life, if today the industry of film loses all its great people, will it continue? The fact of the matter, it will continue. For example, Nollywood has continued, uh, you know, passing the baton from one generation to another. Same with Kenya. If you look at our industry, despite how small it looks like, we've been passing that baton from one generation to another. This act of passing the baton from one generation to another is somehow a relay run that helps in film development because you want each and every phase of life, each and every generation builds their own film industry, enhances the film industry that was there before them, etc., etc. So moving all the way from uh, just film application and coming on to film advancement to the projection of the future, more cameras are being invented. More cameras are being created. That is one aspect of film development. We are developing films in various ways. Remember right now, you can be able to shoot a very small film, or let me, not small, short film, using your mobile phone. That is an aspect of film development. Why? Somebody projected that there will be a need for us to have smartphones to communicate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then somebody saw that we can be able to build apps in a phone and be able to shoot and get audiovisual content to spread all around the world. That is part of film development, it's part of film projection in the future. And therefore, with this string of information, with this string of uh, film application and film projection in the future film will always be sustainable film will always have an impact film will always be developed in so many formulas so with that uh i see it fit to end my session at that particular point because going on will be repeating what i had talked about earlier because film development is linked with what we learned in our early sessions so with that, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Rachel, my time now has come to an end. Unless there are any questions, feel free to respond.
Nimechoka sana. Jana unajua tulikuwa sports. Wapi? Huko shule. Ndara. Mm. wapi unasikia kuna Hapa tu mali hostel. Umeenda hostel za ICS. Sijaji wapi. Kwa hapo unaona Globe mali inakaribia kuanza. Niongea Globe sasa. Toka Tika Rock. Yeah. Kutoka Tika Rock. Mm. Eh? Mali Globe inakuja kuanza. Kuna barabara inakuanga imeteremka on your left. Mm. Eh, hiyo barabara ndio mtu anaingia. So kuna uwanja huko. Kuna uwanja so ni primary plan hapo wana combo. Oh. Ah.
Kopo maze. Wah, nanti kita mulai rehat.
Thank you. 